A20, welcome back to Breakfast Television. Well, to say Dr. Dave Williams is an accomplished Canadian doesn't really do him justice. He's an astronaut, aquanaut, jet pilot, ER doctor, scientist, and CEO. Uh, and he just told me that he's also now officially a best-selling author. He's written a book, Defying Limits, Lessons from the Edge of the Universe. Good morning, Dr. Williams. Good morning. Pleasure talking to you. Well, thanks for having me. Read the book over the weekend. Fascinating read. I'm going to get to that in a moment. But first, I mean, it's not very often he gets to talk to an astronaut. I've got to ask... What goes through your mind, not only when you're in space, but you're one of very few Canadians who've actually done a spacewalk and left the shuttle? Yeah. What goes through your mind? It's almost surreal when you're in space. Of course, we have so many tasks to do. The timeline is really, really busy. But you take these moments where you look over your shoulder doing a spacewalk. You see this incredibly beautiful blue oasis of a planet beneath you. And then it's back to the work site, time to keep going and things. It's absolutely incredible. But in those few moments, that must be life-altering. Oh, there's It's no a question. completely different perspective, yeah. right? My second spacewalk, I was riding on the Canada arm, and they were repositioning the arm, and Charlie Hobos scored to our pilot, said, Dave, take a couple minutes and enjoy the view, because I have to reprogram the arm. A couple of minutes and enjoy the view. It was incredible, absolutely amazing. The space station was behind me. I couldn't see it. All I could see was a planet beneath me. And must reflect on life. Oh, there's no question. You know, you look at the Earth and there's no borders separating countries that you can see from space. You realize we're all in this together. We better start figuring out how we can work together to solve some of these problems. Something I think people don't realize that when you're up there, it seems calm because you're floating around. You are actually traveling at a very fast, high speed uh, rate of speed when you step out of that shuttle. Yeah. Maybe you talk about that for a bit. So it's, it's weird. We're traveling 25 times the speed of sound and everybody wants to know how fast is 25 times the speed. It's really fast. It's eight kilometers a second. You snap wow. your fingers, the space shuttle's gone eight kilometers. It's faster than a rifle bullet. So when I'm doing a spacewalk relative to the Earth, I'm moving that fast, but relative to the space station, I'm moving really slowly. So you actually don't feel that. It no. feels like almost time is standing still, but you are hurtling through space. Yes. It's, it's amazing. Now, two, uh, you went two separate trips, about yes. nine years apart. Yeah. And you were saying that the second time you went up, there's almost like this muscle memory in your brain that you almost know how to act. Because I'm assuming the first time you're in space, you don't know what's going on, right? It's yeah. completely new to your body. Yeah, your body remembers, you know, it's just fingertip forces to move around in space. So on my second space flight, it was like I was there yesterday. But if you look out the window at the Earth, you can see the differences that are taking place in different parts of the planet over a 10 year time period. And it's quite surprising. In Defying Limits, uh, you talk about the fact that when you were young, there were no Canadian astronauts. That wasn't even on the radar. Uh, and yet, that was your goal when you were young. You made that goal, you achieved it, but you definitely went through a lot of hurdles to get there. But also, not only that, uh, between your space trips, there were life hurdles in the way. Yeah. My life has been uh, an interesting journey, ups and downs, twists and turns, like so many other people's and things. But between my first and my second space flight, I was diagnosed with cancer, lost my medical certification as an astronaut, went for surgery, was able to get everything back and subsequently fly in space when I was 54. But, you know, what I've learned is it's how we respond to adversity. It's an opportunity to embrace failure and learn from failure to be able to go on and succeed. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that the book not only obviously talked a lot about your time in space, but also what was happening down here on Earth yeah. and how you're able to over overcome those obstacles. Well, thanks. It's an amazing journey. And, you know, I think failure can be very instructive if we're willing to let it be. Uh, you know, success is great, makes you feel good. And I've had some pretty tough times in my life. I didn't get into medical school first time around. I had to apply second time and make myself better and more attractive as a candidate. So it's what we do when we don't succeed that determines whether we will succeed. All right. Dr. Williams, thank you so much for joining oh, us this morning. Pleasure pleasure. chatting with you. And if you have a chance, make sure you pick up Defying Limits Lessons from the Edge of the Universe, a fascinating read. You're going to love it. Thank you so much. Lots to come on the show. News, weather, and traffic coming up after the break.